My name is Matsumoto from uh, Kona Hospital of Japan. Kona Hospital is famous for Moya Moya disease. So I'm honored to have an opportunity to give my talk and thanks Professor Lois. Uh, I would like to talk about embolization of the choroidal artery in the treatment. This is my disorder. Pre-surgical embolization of cerebral ABMs is effective particularly for deep-seated cerebral AVMs. Because obliteration of the feeding system tends to be the last step in the surgical resection of deep-seated AVMs uh, supplied by the choroidal arteries. Pre-surgical embolization of these feeders could prove beneficial. However, uh, embolization of cerebral AVMs is uh, of choroidal artery is challenging and potentially hazardous because they supply eloquent territories and are of some small caliber and lack of collateral. Anterior choroidal artery or supply posterior limb of the internal capsule, optic tract, lateral geniculate body, globus pallidus, cerebral peduncle, and medial posterior choroidal artery is supplied peduncle, tegmentum, genicular body, corticary, parvina, pineal gland, medial, medial salamus, and lateral posterior choroidal artery uh, supplied peduncle, posterior commissure, part of uh, crura, body of the phonix, lateral geniculate body, probina, those medial ceramic nucleus, body of the uh, caudate nucleus. And this slide is showing the anatomical course of anterior choroidal artery. Anterior choroidal artery arises distally to the pecum. You can see the uh, pecum, and here is the uh, uh, origin of the anterior choroidal artery and can be divided into two segments. It's cisternal segments and plexal segment. The cisternal segment extend from anterior choroidal artery origin to the choroidal fissure here. And this is its uh, plexal point is here. And the, the term of plexal point have been proposed to describe the point of entry of the anterior choroidal artery into the lateral ventricle at the choroidal fissure. The cisternal segment of the anterior choroidal artery takes a gentle, gentle S-shaped course on lateral angiogram. And the plexal point is usually characterized by a steep uh, download course Deep download course of a few millimeters followed by a sharp, uh, sharp um, posterior turn here, you can see, making, making the point of entry on lateral angiogram. Principally, the perforating branches of the anterior choroidal artery passing through the anterior perforating substance to the globus pallidus and the posterior limb of the internal capsule arise from the cisternal segment and do not receive any significant collateral supply. Therefore, the uh, catheter tip must be placed beyond the plexal point to avoid serious ischemic complication during ABM embolization through the, anchor, uh, through the an anterior choroidal artery. Next slide is showing the anatomical course of posterior choroidal artery. Posterior choroidal arteries are classified into medial posterior choroidal artery and lateral posterior choroidal artery. They enter the lateral and third ventricle to supply the choroidal choroid plexus and ventricular, ventricular or wall. It might be difficult to control ischemic complications after embolization through the posterior choroidal artery because no angiographic safety point has been reported thus far. So 
The aim of this, this study is to clarify the risk of complications in the endovascular embolization through the corridor arteries. This is the method. We retrospectively reviewed the medical chart and imaging recorded records of 116 consecutive patients with cerebral ABMs treated by endovascular embolization at Kona Hospital between December 2006 and November 2014. Patients were included if they underwent endovascular embolization through the anterior corridor artery and or posterior corridor artery. Embolization was performed under general anesthesia, depending on the situation, either NVCA or onyx was used as an embolic agent, which was delivered through a marathon microcatheter, navigated to the corridor arteries by Chikai micro guide wire and the systemic anticoagulation. Endovascular embolization through the anterior corridor arteries or posterior corridor arteries was performed as a palliative procedure when flow reduction by embolization of these arterial supplies was considered effective for surgical removal or when it was necessary to obliterate intranidal or feeder aneurysm that were considered likely sites of hemorrhage, hemorrhage before gamma knife therapy. In case with an arterial supply through an uh, anterior corridor artery, the microcatheter tip was advanced uh, distally to the beyond the angiographic, uh, angiographic plexal point yep, uh, of the anterior corridor artery. The catheter position and the degree of the embolic agent reflux were evaluated by the angiography. Any high density lesion detected by post operative CT scan were regarded as a hemorrhagic complication. And the high intensity lesion detected by post operative diffusion weighted image were regarded as ischemic complication. Post operative neurological status, status was evaluated by an experienced physician, a physical therapist. Each patient Final function status was evaluated using the modified ranking scale. This, is, this table shows uh, among the 116 consecutive cases of cerebral ABMs treated by endovascular embolization during this, during this peri study period. We identified the 13 patients who were treated by endovascular embolization through the anterior corridor artery and or posterior corridor artery. And all cases are ruptured ABMs. Of the 13 cases, seven cases were embolized, embolized through the anterior corridor artery alone, five through the posterior corridor artery and one through both arteries. While five were embolized using NVCA and eight using onyx. None of the patient developed hemorrhagic complication on post-operative CT scan. However, post-operative diffusion weighted image showed uh, ischemic lesion in four cases, 32.7%. And one patient developed a transient left hemiparesis and dysarthria that improved within one week. And the other patient developed a left hemiparesis and left hemianopsia that remained uh, at six months follow up. Treatment related, related mortality was 0%. Additional treatment was performed in 12 patients. Open surgery is nine in nine, and gamma knife surgery in three patients. And complete obliteration was confirmed by angiography at the last follow-up in 10 patients. Recurrent bleeding from the ABMs did not occur in any, any of the cases during the follow-up period. 
This is a representative case of anterior choroidal artery embolization. Preoperative axial teeth weighted image showing a left medic, uh, medial temporal AVM. And angiography uh, of the left ICA showing a dilated, dilated anterior choroidal artery supplying the AVM. The microcatheter chip was advanced distally to go beyond the uh, plexal point, uh, the, and you can see the tip of microcatheter is here. This is a this is angiogram from the microcatheter press placed distal to the plexal point. Plexal point is here, and the tip of the microcatheter is here. Then I injected 33% NBCA through anterior choroidal artery without any reflux using plan and push fashion. Continue pushing. Still continue pushing without reflux. Still pushing. And a spirit and pull the microcatheter. Angiography after the injection of NBCA showing that the posterior part of the nidus was tightly embolized. The nidus was embolized effectively with uh, with minimal reflux of the embolic material. So post-operative diff diffusion-weighted image showing no ischemic lesion in the anterior choroidal artery territory. This is a uh, summary. No ischemic complication and open surgery was performed. Next case, eight years old girl and ruptured aneurysm. You can see the uh, hemorrhage in CT scan. And this AVM is located right temporal cortex to inferior form and supplied, supplied by anterior caudal artery and anterior temporal artery. And draining into basal vein of Rosenthal and vein of Rabe and has intranidal aneurysm. So the spatial matching grade is three. This is the angiogram of the right ICA uh, showing a dilated um, anterior choroidal artery supplying the AVM. You can see the intranidal uh, aneurysm here that was considered likely site of hemorrhage. The microcatheter tip was advanced distally to go beyond the angiographic plexal point. Plexal point is here and the cut tip of the cut is here. Angio uh, this is angiogram after the injection of onyx showing that intranidal aneurysm has gone. Next, we embolize residual nidus from anterior temporal artery using onyx. After the procedure, the nidus was embolized effectively, post-operative diffusion weighted image showing no ischemic lesion. And there is no ischemic complications and open surgery was performed and no neurological deficit. The next case is also treated by anterior choroidal artery embolization. Preoperative axial T2 weighted image showing a light front parietal AVM extending to the periventricular region. You can see. And geography of the right internal carotid artery showing an um, AVM fed by the right anterior choroidal artery with a uh, with a small feeder aneurysm here that was considered likely site of the hemorrhage. This is a selective angiography of the right anterior choroidal artery, showing the position of the microcatheter uh, 
um, was placed slightly proximal to the flexor uh, point. Flexor point is here, and the tip of the microcatheter is here. And next, we uh, 15 NB, a 15 percent NBCA injection was performed. And you can see non subtracted lateral view showing the NBCA cast here, which occluded not only the uh, feed aneurysm, but also the flexor point of the anterior choroidal artery. And you here after the embolization showing occlusion of the right anterior choroidal artery and the disappearance of the feeder aneurysm. That is good. Uh, but uh, post operative axial diffusion weighted image revealing high intensity area near the posterior limb of the uh, internal capsule and uh, periventricular region. The patient developed transient hemiparesis. This is a summary. Uh, this patient had um, embolization related mo mo mobility. And additional treatment was gamma knife therapy and modified ranking scale at six months after uh, three. The next case is treated by uh, posterior choroidal artery embolization. Preoperative T2 weighted image showing the small AVM located in the spraining of the corpus callosum. And geography of the left vertebral artery showing an AVM fit by the lateral posterior choroidal artery. You can hear. Artery is here. Good. Selective angiography of the right lateral posterior choroidal artery showing an AVM draining into ventricular, ventricular vein. Onyx 18 injection was performed. non subtracted view showing the onyx cast within the lateral posterior choroidal artery and the nidus was minimum nidus with minimal reflux of the embolic material. I used uh, the onyx 18 in this case. So, and unfortunately, post-operative axial diffusion weighted image revealing the high intensity area in the right pruginal and the spraining of the corpus callosum, but uh, um, which was a symptomatic region. So, summary of this case: diffu uh, diffusion weighted image high region, yes, but. Uh, but embolization related morbidity, no. The additional treatment is open surgery, open surgery was performed and the modified ranking scale at six months after is zero. Let's move to discussion. Only two previous reports have described ABM embolization through anterior choroidal arteries. Dodd et al. described their experience in performing, in particular, uh, sorry, uh, PVA embolization of the anterior choroidal artery in 15 patients. They experienced two hemorrhagic complications due to anterior choroidal artery perforation during the catheterization, in addition to two cases of the ischemic complications. Next row report, Hose et al. Et al. also experienced one ischemic complication in their series of six patients with temporal ABMs embolized through the anterior choroidal artery using NBCA. And we experienced no technical complication during selective micro catheterization of the choroidal arteries in any procedure. However, we could not advance the microcatheter distally to the flexor point of the anterior choroidal artery in four of the eight cases. Blue line is a mean the microcatheter, and 
here is the uh, flexor point. The case one, two, three, four, it's a uh, micro cassette tip, it's go distally to the uh, flexor point. So two, two of these were embryos from the cisternal segment proximal to the flexor point and developed the post-operative infections on the case five, six, seven, eight. However, embolization from the cisternal segment of the anterior corridor artery does not always result in ischemic complication. To is, is, uh, of course, uh, four cases is um, show the diffusion weighted, weighted image high region, but only two cases is symptomatic and the two is asymptomatic. This suggesting suggests uh, potential collateral circulation. Recent uh, cadaveric study showed that 38% of the capsule ceramic artery arises from first part of flexor segment of anterior corridor artery. So we have to be aware that the flexor point is not always a perfect safety point. In conclusion, ischemic complications are possible following the embolization of cerebral ABMs through the choroidal artery, even with modern neuro neurointerventional art devices and techniques. Embolization through the choroidal artery may be an appropriate treatment option when the risk of surgery is considered to outweigh the risk of embolization. Our paper, which including this concept, was published on JNS last year. Thank you.